Okay, we're going to do a tutorial on how to get uh, Poser Motion into Marvelous Designer uh, Simulate the Cloth Dynamics and then bring it back into Poser uh, I'm using Chess here because it shaded the forums nicely and it's a lower vertex mesh so my system doesn't struggle quite quite as much so the first thing we're going to do is bring in a bvh file now I know the bvh file uh, doesn't start where Jess is standing right now so I'm giving this 15 frames for the motion between where Jess is now and where the bvh file starts so that uh, the dynamics uh, isn't forced to calculate when the figure is moving too quickly. You'll see what I mean in a minute. There's a lot of stuff in here that doesn't match. But the stuff that does, I think, is okay. Right, so. She's going to go she's shooting across there. Starts there. It's quite quick. Look like her arms coming in so close. At the bottom there. Look at this. Brilliant. So it really starts about twenty four. So we're okay to delete. This one, no, this here. It keeps her arm out of the way of her body so it doesn't hit any cloth. And then we'll do the same with this one. Again, brilliant. You just love poser. Anyway, I'll take it to there and delete that. Keeps it on a minute. I should really do a lot more. here but I won't bother, we'll just see how we get on. Should do more to slow down this motion between there and there so that the simulation doesn't struggle too much. I'm also not going to simulate 315 frames. We'll do 105 frames. So we'll stop there. Yes, we'll do that. So that's the end of the frame. So I'm going to add on five frames just to give me a five, a wee buffer at the end for any potential issues. And the camera will switch over. The posing camera. You can see what's going on here. We'll swing around to there. So 
So that's as cleaned up as I'm going to do it just now. So, we export, export even uh, Jesse's motion and we'll save the world position. Okay, and we will. Thing, just leave it at one. So, while well, that's exporting, I'm going to go over to my last designer. So, brought an avatar in previously of Jess, uh, so we'll give her something to wear. As you can see, the system's struggling a wee bit. It's not all the stuff I'm trying to do. Everything's so slow. Like the back of the dress, and we'll pick there. Okay. Like the front of the dress. That's finished yet. That is finished now. Oh, this is just struggling. Pull that out a wee bit. Put it there. one here. So from there to there should be one seam. Just confirm that's correct. Which it is. Do 
these guys. Hmm, is that all right? Should be in, I believe. Click, click, yep. And the one we can't see. Okay. Right, so we've not brought in the animation yet here. So we'll just simulate that just now. See how it goes. Okay, let's switch them off. That one. Pull them out a bit. Sink that across. Simulate it a bit. Okay. Let's That'll do this for us. So we'll switch the sink off. Right, so now we need to bring in our avatar animation. So this is Marvelous Designer with the, avat the animation plugin. And everything is going extremely slowly. So it's the standard cache we want. And it's NC2. The tab is brought in at 8.6, so we'll do the same with this. Right, so we went straight into simulating. And it is going a bit fast for it. Too fast for it. Stop there. Let's not move. Yes. That's a good. So we'll don't do this bit here. Too fast for the simulation to keep up. Don't really see it with a posing camera. So that backward motion and forward motion. It's probably coming from the hip. I'm going to delete all these. That's not so bad. It's mostly just the Z motion that's the problem. So now.
was a smoother transition into the action bit that we actually want. But we're not going to marvelous designs until this is finished saving just in case it's looking at that file style still, but it should be. And it will then so we go back to the start. Go back to the start. So we're going to re-sim it. We want to switch this off because we want to get it settled down. This makes the MDD animation run, which we don't want it to do right now. So we will just go from here and hit record and see whether it can keep itself together while it moves. In fact, it hasn't picked up that new animation. So we'll stop. And we'll stop. Uh, to start. And put that animation again. Must bring that animation into memory then, rather than just reading the file each frame. So it's looking not too bad. We'll try recording there. Overwrite it. We do want to overwrite it. Lost it straight away. Cancel that. Switch that off. Animation go to start. We'll just re pop that up. And we'll simulate. Great and ready to go, and we'll see how it goes this time. Record. Well, oh, it's moving much slower now. Simulation's not struggling with stuff going too fast, and then we're into the actual bit we want. So we'll see how it goes. Finishes. Good. Switch them off. Switch these off. Go to the animation. Right. So we're way up at frame cloth. 120 was most seen, and it's only 110. Something I completely forgot to show you. Um, when you're doing animations in kind of lucky hand poser. See this frame rate, thirty frames per second. Right? And then in Marvelous Designer you have the simulation property 
time step of 0 0.0333, right, so mine match currently, if I want to do a 30 second frame, if I do 1 divided by 30, I get the 0 0.03333, so that matches the poser. If that had been, for instance, 1 divided by 25, if this had been setting at uh, 0 0.04, poser would need to be at 25 frames per second. So be aware that these two need to match each other. Basically the frame rate is the inverse of the time step, and they need to match. So we have 110 frames in poser. It's important that we export 110 frames. Uh, if you look at the animation... Oh my. Can't see it. We'll find out just now. Export camera animation again, MDD cache standard. And we'll call it NC2 dress. Save that. Now, play region only. And this is the scale we need. Okay. <coughs> If we go back into Poser, go back to the first frame. Now, if we file import object, uh, don't need that, don't need that. And if we go to MD test, we should have this dress object which gets exported when you export the MDD file from MD from Motion Marvelous Designer. There it is. Not exactly where you would want it to be. Uh, but now what we should do is import the MDD file onto that. In fact, before we do that, we shall save this. We can save a Python file here, which will automatically load in the same file if we save it where we save the scene. And we'll just call it. This is the one we want the MDD file on. Now the MDD file is in MD2 test again. And that's the dress one. And we should not need to scale it. File frames 127 will not fit scene 110. Now, OK that. And OK that, and I'll explain what you're seeing. Right, if you noticed in Marvelous Designer, this went over the end. That's the play range, 127. The scene file is only 110 long. And the MDD file from Marvelous Designer is 127 long. So we need to take this up to 127. We then need to look at this you'll notice that there is a morph on the dress and if you look at the graph for the morph it stops um, 
where the scene file was and it needs to be where the actual MDD file is. If that is incorrect, when you go to different frames you will not get whole numbers and you need the whole number to pull the correct frame in. Right? So if that was back at where it was, if this was back at 110, you notice the frames are incorrect now. It's because it's trying to pull in a bigger NDV file than the actual scene size is. And the script is unable to bring in the... or increase the scene size to reflect the MDD file size. So you need to be aware that the scene file size would need to match uh, the MDD file size. And if you jump about frames, you should always see a whole number in here. Okay. So we'll keep this a bit smaller. Down the road. And if we go to camera view, posing camera. Now you'll find if you go backwards it doesn't always fit properly. It is actually getting the correct flame frame. For some reason Poser always struggles with it. You go forward, it goes into the correct frame. I think we'll change that colour to a bit less than okay, go to there. If you jump forward you'll get the correct frame. If you drag, you might and you might not get it. You will always get the software always picks up the right frame, but Poser never pulls it in properly. If I go back one, go forward one, pulls in the same frame, but this time it's all correct. I don't know why that is, but if you're going forward in one step, it will always get the right frame. So if you're saving an animation, Forward one. If you're saving an animation, always save it. And if you're rendering an animation, I mean, always save it a frame. Always use frame at a time. Settings. Don't save them as avis. Save them as individual frames. And then put them together in something like. Dub. Okay, I hope that's helped.